one of my colleagues pointed out that everything we were seeing in terms of how a Richard Branson, for example, or an Anita Roddick or a John Brown at BP, uh, or even a John McFarlane here at ANZ, how they thought that the process of thinking and doing was not what it said it was in the textbooks. So we had to write another book. The literacy, the term literacy, means a whole domain of knowledge in itself. So it's not a competence, it's a, it's a whole region of knowledge. And we, we decided there were five that we were seeing that these people were using almost instinctively to create businesses which, which are extraordinary. Networked intelligence is understanding what is going on all around you in real time. So you have real-time intelligence about what's happening all around you, and you need to be able to use that. You need to use it against what the future, your future and your, your foresight about where is it that you want to be? What, what direction do you need to take? Otherwise, you're like, if you don't have vision, if you don't have direction and purpose, or you, you understand where you want to be in five years' time or ten years' time, you're like a cork bobbing up and down on the wave. Where do you want to go? doesn't matter. Any path will do. Take any path. High risk. Huge risk. So foresight, uh, the, the, the design of where you want to be is very, very important. Strategic navigation is actually navigating in real time the conditions all around you that are changing all the time to get to that future faster. Faster than competitors. Faster than you would believe possible to get to the future fast. Deep design is engaging everyone in the conversation that will enable you to get there. Everyone in the organization. Long gone are the days where the elite managers of the business should decide where to go and how to go. Everyone should be involved in this now. Everyone in your company should be involved. And finally, if you do all of that correctly, you arrive at brand resonance, which is that extraordinary sweet spot and you know it when you get it, when the people out there are talking about you in exactly the same way you're talking about yourselves. You say, we're great, we've got terrific products, we've got wonderful services, and your customers and other people are saying exactly the same thing about you. That's brand resonance. And when you get brand resonance, as probably those of you who know acoustics know, resonance gradually amplifies so that the story gets larger, the story gets bigger. So the five literacies are very critical to business in the future. Here are a few examples, and they're just a few examples. Uh, we've got Zappos, uh, Tony Shea at the top, online shopping mall based in Las Vegas. They're an extraordinary company. It's more difficult to get into Zappos, they boast, than it is to Harvard as a student. But the culture is really, really strong. It's an extraordinary company, does things very differently, very counterintuitively. We've got GE, one of the most imaginative companies in the world, Google. Boeing, Best Buy over there in the middle, uh, they worked out that the smartphone was an office in the pocket, so you didn't need to go to a place to work. You know, you could do your work anywhere. And I'm sure Wolfgang will talk about this. And their productivity increase right across the board, right across the company. They're in Mexico, US, China. Uh, was roughly 35, 36% increased productivity just through realizing that. Telstra, uh, this is not a plug for Telstra. It just happens to be that Telstra is one of the most innovative companies in the world. So what can you do if you're really serious about doing business differently as a conscious, awake business? There are four pathways that are absolutely critical. The first is the understanding that you do not need to go to a particular place to do your work. You can do your work anywhere. Spaces are in your head, virtual spaces. Yes, spaces like this, for example, where you can be more creative than you can be in a closed-in office. You really need to rethink what is most important to me as a business and how can I do that, moving into a space which is innovative, imaginative, creative. Where can I do that? How can I do that? Second point, that the world is shifting from one based on competition and scarcity to a world based on collaboration and abundance. 
There is sufficient food being produced in the world today to feed 7 billion people. It's just that it's not produced in the right places. And it, it means then that some of us starve while other, others of us are obese. So collaborative co-design where we can work together on one, but what makes better sense is absolutely critical. Real-time adaptation is based on understanding what's happening around you and learning to change faster than we have in the past. We need to adapt what we do and how we do it. and We need to be awake and alert to possibilities for change, for cooperation. One of those, the final point, is the emergence of industrial ecologies or industrial clusters where groups of companies get together because there are very good reasons for doing so. Either because their outputs can be used a waste, can be used as inputs to other processes, or they can join together in terms of procurement policy and get better deals buying larger quantities together, or there is some good reason for working together. But one thing I can be very positive about is there is no such thing today for a successful business as business as usual. Things are changing, things are changing dramatically, and all of us must have our uh, finger on the pulse of that change. We must be awake to the opportunities that exist. And that, that, that ability to think and learn at speed increase the learning metabolism, adjust and adapt accordingly is absolutely fundamental. That is what is next. Thank you very much.